Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. I want to talk to you about some of the biggest mistakes men make when they come here to the Philippines. A big mistake many make here is leading with your wallet. Now, what do I mean by leading with your wallet? You're always trying to impress somebody. You're either trying to impress a girl, her family, other locals, other expats. You don't need to impress anybody. Nobody really cares how much money you have. And by showing off what you have, really shows how little you do have. A lot of guys that are here, and they have a great pension, they have good savings, they have plenty of money for the lifestyle they're leading, don't let anybody know how much money they have. They don't lead with their wallet. They pay their fair share. You know, when you're at the coffee shop, they buy their own coffee. Maybe they'll buy a coffee for the table once in a great while, but that's things you don't need to do. You don't need to be picking up the bill every time you go out to lunch with people, when you meet for coffee, when you meet for drinks. And in a relationship, it is just the wrong thing to do. You don't want that girl thinking you have unlimited funds by you just trying to impress her, buying her everything she needs, and making her think that her financial needs for the rest of her life are going to be taken care of by you. Don't be leading with your wallet. When you meet the family, be humble. Sure, take a gift, take a little bit of food with you to go meet the family. But don't go there saying, hey, I'm going to buy you a new refrigerator. I'm going to buy you a new stove. Don't lead with your wallet. Because once they determine that you have more money than you need, you're going to be the easy out for all the problems that they have. Whenever they have a problem with the electric bill or something breaks, they're going to think that you're the guy with plenty of money that can take care of it. And it's no sweat off your back because you're rich. Don't let them think you're rich. Be humble. Just let them think that you get by day by day. No matter how rich you are or how poor you are, don't lead with your wallet. A big mistake men make coming to the Philippines is they get involved with politics. Not just Philippine politics, but their home country politics. A lot of people don't want to talk about that stuff. They left it all back behind. Guys, when you get here, mind your own business. Don't get involved with neighbors and personal issues other people have with each other. Don't get involved with your neighbor who could be a Filipino, with the issues and problems he has with another Filipino on the same road, in the same brandy. Don't take sides. Don't get involved. Remember the old story of this guy, he was shooting pool. And he was arguing with his wife. He was yelling at her and threatening to hit her. And some stranger came in to save the girl and say, hey, quit that. And next thing you know, the wife hit him with a pull cue and said, leave my husband alone. You never know where these arguments and difference of opinions go. When they make up, maybe you're the guy left on the outside. And getting involved with politics here in the Philippines, politics here is very serious. If you think the U.S. election was very serious this last time, here there's assassination attempts on governors, on mayors, even on the president at times. Don't get involved with politics. Do we really care who is in charge of the country? Do we really care who the barangay captain is? No, we don't. It's none of our business. And keep your business to yourself. Guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think are some of the biggest mistakes an expat or man makes coming here to the Philippines. The biggest problem guys have when they come here is put the happiness of the girl ahead of their own personal happiness. You can't do that, guys. When you get here, you have to take care of you. You have to be taken care of. You have to be happy. You need to find the correct place to live. You need to find the lifestyle you want. You need to be comfortable where you live in your own skin and enjoy the Philippines the way you want to enjoy it. If it's either you're at the ocean and you want to learn how to scuba dive and snorkel, or you're a mountain guy and you like hiking, or you like the big city, you want to live in an urban area, you have to be happy. You meet a girl and so many guys go and live in that girl's hometown. And they decide, I don't like Baiwan, I don't like Chaton, I don't like Sipali, I want to live in Dumaguete. If you can't find the right place to live, 
that makes you happy. Definitely don't chase the girl where you're going to have to live somewhere that you're not happy. That relationship won't last. And you need to be happy. You need to take care of number one. And if you're happy and you're taken care of, then taking care of other people that you love or end up loving is going to be much easier. Remember, nobody here wants to take care of you when you get off the plane. When you come here and you know, you're know you retired, you got your bags, and you say, man, I'm going to move to the Philippines. I'm going to find the right place for me. Who's, who's looking out for you? Who's looking out for number one? You are. You have to make sure wherever you go that you're happy. It's like going out to eat. You know, why go to a restaurant you don't like? Go to a restaurant you like. But why live in a city you don't like? The city has nothing for you. Maybe you think it's overcrowded. Maybe you think it's polluted. Why do you want to live there? Don't. Live in the community you want to live in where you're going to be happy. Find the type of girl you want to live with that's going to make you happy. Don't worry about making her happy before you're happy. Because once you're happy, you can take care of her. Don't worry about spending all your money on her so she's happy with the clothes she has. She has a new motorcycle or a car or whatever. You have to make sure you have money for you. You have to take care of you. And really, you can't really take care of anybody else until you're happy with the way that you're living, the lifestyle that you've chosen, and your budget, that you're living within your budget. Don't put other people's happiness, especially a girl, ahead of your own until you make that long-term commitment. Don't be dating a girl and spending money on her and then worried, okay, I spent money on her, now I don't have money to pay my phone bill, or I don't have money to uh, go eat at this restaurant I want to go to, or I don't have money now to travel. Take care of yourself. Make sure all your happiness is checked. You're number one. And if a girl really cares for you, she's going to be worrying about your happiness also. So make sure you take care of yourself. Another big mistake guys make is underestimating their budget. You know, taking things for granted here in the Philippines. Guys, please keep an eye on the exchange rate. If you're planning on coming here and using 58 pesos to the dollar and this thing drops down to 50, 52, or even worse, are you still in a good position? And your money is strong here in the Philippines. Plan your budget accordingly. But remember, you, there's certain things you always have to take care of. You have to have a place to live. You have to have food to eat. And you need to take care of your visas. Don't skimp on doing your visa. Don't decide, hey, I don't have the money this month. I'm not going to renew my visa. Then next thing you know, it's one month, two months, three months down the line. And you could get into trouble with a lot of hefty fines, a lot of penalties for being late. Don't underestimate how much money you have when you get here. Your lifestyle determines your budget when you come here to the Philippines. You can get a nice place to live, have a bunch of good friends, know where to eat for a good price. But if you don't have enough money, things are going to get tough. Make plans, good planning. Do your homework on the cost of things. Also, come for a visit. Do a test run. Boots on the ground. See if you can live here for one or two months on whatever budget you have. If it's $800 a month, $1,000 a month, or $2,000 a month, or more, make sure it's going to work for you. I've heard stories of guys living here on $800 a month and doing okay. And I've also heard stories of guys with $4,000 a month who have trouble making ends meet every month. Make sure you have some money put away for an emergency, those unexpected expenses that come up in life. They happen every month. You know, maybe you don't budget to repair a flat tire here in the Philippines. It might run you up to, you know, $50 to $100 to repair or replace a tire and a rim on your motorbike. Be prepared for unexpected expenses. And we all know the nightmare of medical cost if you don't have any kind of coverage or you don't have money put aside. Have some startup money and also have money put away to get the hell out of Dodge. You know, you get in trouble with that girl, 
she doesn't like you anymore, the cousins and the brothers are after you, and you want to get on a ferry and get out of town. Make sure you know what your expenses are. Don't underestimate how much money you need here in the Philippines. Your lifestyle, like I said, is very important. Are you out every night? Are you traveling a lot? You need more money. If you're going to be a homebody, find yourself a cheap apartment, stick close to home, and enjoy the local food, you should be fine. But that's the lifestyle you've decided. And is it really what you want in life? I'd like to have the Western conveniences, the variety of restaurants, and things to do, but I also like to have it at a lower cost than I would pay back home in the U.S. So your lifestyle determines how much money you need. Nothing better than doing a test run to see if your money will go far enough. Like I said, don't forget to factor in the exchange rate and inflation. Inflation took a big bite out of a lot of people's money in the last five years. So be aware of both those factors. Big mistake, settling for less, man. You don't want to come here and settle for less. You know, when you look for an apartment or you look for a house to rent, don't settle for the first place you see. It might not be right for you. You know, you make a commitment somewhere on a lease and you have to break it because you don't like the place or you don't like the city. Uh, make sure it's what you want. Don't settle for less. Settle for what you can afford what you can enjoy in the area that you enjoy living in. Don't settle for less. When you go to buy your first motorbike and say you're going to buy a used one, don't settle for the first one you find. Look at multiple bikes and negotiate. Look for a good deal. Don't settle just for anything. It'll come back to haunt you. I don't know how many times people have come here to the Philippines. Come here to Dumaguete. Rented the first apartment or house that they saw. And then a month later telling me, Mike, I had to break the lease. I don't like that place. It's not for me. Maybe they found a better deal somewhere else. Maybe the house was just bad. But they were excited. They got here and they settled for the first place they found because they just wanted to settle down too quickly. Don't be afraid to live out of a hotel for a week or two or even a month or an Airbnb for a month until you find the right place. And don't settle on the wrong girl, guys. Don't, you know, you meet the first girl and you go out with her. Don't fall in love with the very first girl you meet unless it's true love and you really do love her, of course. But, man, there's a lot of fish in the sea. Don't settle for less. If she is less than what you were looking for in a girl, when you decided you were coming here and you said, okay, I want a girl that's college educated, no kids, about 30 years of age, don't settle on a 22-year-old that dropped out of high school that has two or three kids. You know, don't settle on a girl that has two children with two different fathers or four children with four different fathers. You can find what you want. You can find somebody that checks all the boxes. And when you find the right girl, you'll know it. Just don't settle for less just to have a companion. You can easily find the right companion that's right for you tonight and this weekend and for a week, but to find the right partner for the rest of your life. Don't settle. Find the right one. Take your time. Thinking everything is cheap is a big mistake here in the Philippines. The Philippines is not as cheap as a lot of people think. So what is cheap? Rent is cheap. Local food is cheap. Local transportation, public transportation is cheap. Labor is cheap. If you need somebody to help you do something around the house or your apartment, you need something fixed, you need the oil changed in your motorbike or your car, you got to pay for the oil, but the labor part is cheap. All those are cheap. What's expensive? Electronics is expensive. You know, you want to get a quality phone, you want to get an iPhone, a name brand phone. They're not cheap. You know, if you want to travel domestically, you want to fly from Manila to Dumaguete and you got a couple bags. It's not cheap. People think it's cheap. And the ferry ride from Dumaguete to Cebu, uh, I told somebody it was about 1,800 pesos. And he was shocked. He goes, so much. How can anybody afford it? I thought the average wage was 300 pesos a day, 5 or $6 a day. I told him, that's the, that's the minimum wage. People make a little bit more than that, depending on the job and skill they have. But 
they saved their money. And domestic travel is not as cheap as you think it is if you want to go island hopping, especially if you got a motorbike and you got to travel and you got to take your bike or your car and put it on a row row and travel island to island. It can start to add up. Domestic travel is an expense. A lot of guys don't realize it's not free. It's going to cost you some money. And the big expense that shocks them that is not cheap is Western Foods. You go in there, I'm going to use the example of a can of Spam. Can of Spam, what is it in the U.S.? $1.98, $2.18, $2.20? Here in the Philippines, it's $4, maybe up to $5 at times, depending, you know, on the import fees and, you know, because they got to import this stuff. Anything imported is expensive. A bag of Lay's potato chips made in the U.S. is expensive. You go to Western style restaurants, you go to Chili's, you go to Outback Steakhouse, and you get something other than a cheap item on the menu, you're going to be spending $20 for the main course. You're going to walk out of there dinner for two at about $38, almost 2,000 pesos. Um, that's without beer, without alcohol. So Western style uh, foods and Western style restaurants, franchise restaurants are very expensive here. Now McDonald's is cheap, Burger King is cheap, but the name brand places like Chili's and Outback, any American franchise, Fridays, uh, they're all expensive and you're going to find them to be expensive. Don't think everything that you do here in the Philippines is cheap. A cup of coffee at Tom and Tom's is 160 pesos. That's just under $3. That's what you pay in the U.S. There's places you can get a cup of coffee for 60 pesos or 80 pesos. But you want to go into a Starbucks, you want to go into Tom Toms, which are franchise type restaurants and coffee shops, you're going to be paying premium money for that. Big mistake for your health is underestimating the weather. It is hot here. If you're outside in the direct sun, it is hot. I've met many guys who have come in sunburned, you know, they're all red, uh, they're sweating, they, they're suffering some sort of heat exhaustion maybe even close to heat stroke because they underestimate how hot it is here in the Philippines. You know, they're staying at their Airbnb or the hotel and they decide to take a midday walk around the city and it is hot. That sun's beating down on them. Guys, don't be afraid to buy an umbrella and open that umbrella in the sunshine to keep shade on yourself. Don't be afraid to wear, you know, like a light shirt but longer sleeves to protect from getting sunburned. The heat will cause you many problems. You know, you'll get sick, you'll get headaches from all that. Also, the humidity. The humidity, you're always sweating. And if it's a breezy day, uh, the sweat's going to evaporate. And you're not really going to know how dehydrated you're making yourself. You need to stay hydrated, need to drink a lot of water. Don't get caught off guard on the weather. And if you're traveling island to island, once you're here in the Philippines, Keep an eye on the long range weather. You want to see if a typhoon's coming. And if one is, you want to make sure you're traveling to a different part of the country away from the storm, not directly into the storm. Up here in Manila area, Northern Luzon, they've had four to six typhoons in the last month and a half. So you have to keep an eye on the weather. Rainy season can be very rainy and you don't want to get wet. You don't want to get your shoes all wet. You don't want to get sick. And then when it finishes raining, it gets very dusty here. The dirt comes down and the dirt's on the road and the trucks and the bikes and the cars are kicking up the dirt into the air and you're breathing this in, you can get respiratory problems. Be cognizant of the weather. Bring a hat. You know, don't be afraid to be wearing a hat. And I'm going to tell you again, have an umbrella, even on a hot sunny day, that umbrella will protect you from the sun. And then if it's rainy season, you never know when it's going to start raining. They get these 15, 20 minute heavy rainstorms and then it ends and the sun comes back out and it's really hot. So uh, be aware of the extreme weather conditions here in the Philippines. Making emotional financial decisions. In other words, buying things on impulse. Impulse purchases of things. So you're here in Dumaguete and you want to go travel around and you've never ridden a motorbike before. 
or you have, but you're not really that experienced. Don't go to the Honda dealer. Don't go to the Yamaha dealer and spend 150,000 pesos, almost $3,000 US on a motorbike. Rent one for a month. Spend that three to 6,000 pesos and rent one. Spend that 60 to $100 and rent one. And make sure you know how to ride. And make sure that's what you want. You can rent the style of bike that you're thinking of buying to make sure it's the right one for you. Now, once you've been here for a while, you can make these decisions. But I bought a freezer here once Janet and I started hanging out together. I said, I'm going to buy a freezer. I'm going to keep this thing full. Uh, the only thing that goes in my freezer now is a gallon of ice cream every now and then. Or we make ice cubes. It's, it was a waste of money. It was something I shouldn't have bought. Use your common sense. Don't overspend. Don't buy big items without thinking about it. Go back home. Pause and reflect and decide, do I really want that item? You know, maybe the apartment you're renting has a small TV and you're saying, wow, it'd be great to have a big 55-inch television. Well, think about it for a minute. Are you really going to be watching that much television? And when you move, are you taking that TV with you? If you're staying in the city of Dumaguete or if you're in Cebu, and in Cebu, but if you're leaving, you're going to go from Dumaguete to Behold, are you going to haul this television with you? Uh, it's not really. So think over all your big decisions, pause and reflect. And when you're dating, learn to say no. Learn to say no when the girl that you're dating needs a phone or she needs some help with something. You have to learn to say no. You know, <clears throat> you say no, it doesn't mean you hate the person. It means no, you don't want to buy that. No, our relationship is not far enough along for me to make that kind of purchase for you. Learn to say no. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Remember your happiness over the girl's happiness. And also, your budget, while you're here, try so hard to stay within your budget. It's, it's like you're in business for yourself. You have X amount of money on the first of the month. At the end of the month, you want to be able to still have some money left. Don't spend it all. Don't go into negative mode, but try and save a buck. If you can spend $1 less than what your budget is, it was a winning battle that month. It's a constant battle to stay within your budget, to build a safety net, to put money into the bank. People, you know, they put their spending habits at the bottom of the list of things that can cause trouble. Your spending habits can cause you a lot of trouble because you spend too much money today and then when you get to the future, you're out of money. You don't have any extra money for real emergency. Stay within your budget from day one, day two, day three. Try to stay under your budget. Wouldn't it be great to make a budget of $1,500 and find out you're only spending $1,200 and you're saving $300 USD every month? That would mean every fourth month you've created one more month of budget money saved. And that can be the money going towards your medical expenses or unforeseen circumstances. Or maybe in the future you do get a great girlfriend, you want to get married and the expense is there. Or you want to change your visa from a tourist visa to 13A or a SRV and you need to save some money. Do the best you can. Don't spend money with just emotion, thinking, yeah, I need that right now. Those impulsive buys can get you in trouble. Because when you leave the island, chances are you're going to leave it all behind. A lot of these apartments and houses that are furnished that you rent, it's stuff left over from the guy that was here before, and he didn't take it with him. So guys, those are some of the biggest mistakes I think you can have while you're here in the Philippines. Think it over. Let me know what you think is the biggest uh, mistake an expat or a man can make when they come here to the Philippines. Until next time.